UFC 299 on March 9th is primed to be another pay-per-view card for the ages among the stacked first quarter lineup of 2024. We got a lot of chaos on deck, ladies and gentlemen. And headlining the event is none other than the new bantamweight champion, Sugar Sean O'Malley. This is just the beginning of the Sugar era. When you put a gold belt on someone with the personality of this young man, he only has one place to go, and that's to the moon. O'Malley is now gearing up for his first title defense against the only man to defeat him, Marlon Cheeto Vera. The guy that has a lot of hype, good for him, but he don't have the dog I have inside. The dog I have inside is bigger than all of these guys. Since their first meeting in 2020, they've become the biggest stars at 135 pounds in the UFC, and they now run it back in a heated championship main event. I am about to tattoo this dude. Exactly. I will break records on his face. Fuck this guy. I believe I'm a better fighter. I believe everything I want to fucking believe. In the co-main event is a pivotal five-round lightweight brawl between two men who live for the art of warfare. As the future Hall of Famer Dustin Poirier puts it all on the line against the dangerous rising contender, Benoit Saint-Denis. Dustin Poirier is back in action against Francis own Benoit Saint-Denis. Five rounds, this is an incredible fight. As the UFC returns to Miami, Florida for another thrilling event, Get ready for a cage culture inside look into UFC 299. What more could you ask from a fight card? A fantastic night of mixed martial arts in Miami. UFC 299 is absolutely ridiculous. UFC legend Dustin Poirier is at an interesting point in his career still at the top of the most talent-stacked division in mixed martial arts after years of accumulating an insane resume. I fought the who's who in mixed martial arts in the UFC. Champion after champion, top contender after top contender, and I'll be here as long as I want to be. There's no denying he's still one of the best, but also nearing the end. So you would think he would carefully pick opponents that would only launch him forward into another championship setting. Which is why I think we were all surprised to see him accept a fight with little to gain and a lot to lose against perhaps the most dangerous rising contender in the division. I need something to get me up in the morning. I'm 35 years old now. You know, this guy's a young, hungry lion who's on a streak. He has no quit in him. And those are the kind of fights that excite me, man. I know it's not good for me, but those are the kind of fights I want to be involved in. Five rounds March 9th. He's the God of War. That's what he wants. Benoit Saint-Denis has been making a ton of noise in his short time with the promotion. When you speak to Benoit Saint-Denis, there is a fire in his eyes. Very, very special fighter. He's on a five-fight win streak in the UFC, and more importantly, a five-fight finish streak. So far, the proud Frenchman has impressively lived up to his nickname, the God of War. He's so good, and he's so good so quick. For a guy that started taking martial arts so he could be a better soldier, it is fucking insane to see that guy like, within six, seven years, become at the top of the heat of the UFC division. That's as stacked talent-wise as any division. This fight at UFC 299 is one that will have us on the edge of our seat for every second it lasts. On the side of Dustin Poirier, I feel like this is a dangerous but very winnable fight. Benoit Saint-Denis is fantastic in every area, and he tries to dissect his opponents and look to, for that weakness to try to exploit, but he's not a specialist in, in any one area. Dustin is a specialist in the boxing department. Both are so well-rounded and always willing to go to war. But will the experience and wisdom of Poirier shine yet again, or will the young, hungry, confident contender catapult himself into the top five? I feel like the rhythm, timing, you know, my experience, I pick up on that stuff the longer the fight goes, and, and I'll find openings and, and things like that. The better fighter wins over five rounds. I do believe it's going to be a huge test and uh, a fight we will be proud of. I cannot wait. Dustin's coming off of a loss. Yeah. Where is he at at this stage in his career at the age of 34, about to turn 35? Benoit Saint-Denis is on the rise. Yeah. He's the younger fighter, he's the fresher fighter, and he's on a tear right now. Dustin Poirier, I'm going to give him war. I'm coming for everybody in the lightweight division. This is what I do, I live for this, every day. Dustin Poirier is a bona fide star who's decided to risk a lot. Corey deserves that credit. This is a hard fight. 
This Denise gentleman can get down. Some serious leather is going to be thrown inside that octagon. Five rounds March 9th. You will find out. In the summer of 2020, we witnessed a fight bound to produce the next contender in the talent-stacked UFC bantamweight division. Between Sean O'Malley, an undefeated sensation who continued to deliver on the hype. It's time to buy stock in Sean O'Malley. This kid has that it thing. There's something about him. And Marlon Vera, an Ecuadorian brawler with a longer up and down journey to contention. He really has come a long way in terms of his skill set, but his mentality has always been there. And that's what's driven him to this point. What began as healthy competition in the fight game escalated into a bitter rivalry following the outcome of their first meeting. In my eyes, it was a very, very lucky kick. He threw a kick and I pulled out and his big toe hit this right behind my knee, this perennial nerve. I was still piecing him up with one foot. You know, I threw a combo, stepped back, foot completely gave out, ended up on my back, elbowed me in the head a couple times, fight's over. I just didn't feel like I got beat skill for skill. I didn't, I didn't go in there and feel like this guy is better than me. When the fight was going on, I kick him in the leg. I can feel, I saw his body gave up. My only job was to put him out and I elbow him in the face, put him to sleep, and now we're here. And in the three and a half year period between then and now, a lot has changed. Since then, O'Malley has only risen his star power, going unbeaten in six straight fights and becoming the bantamweight champion in the process. You never know, man. Styles make fights and things happen in fights that you sometimes don't expect. And I'm sure you saw the crowd at the end. O'Malley isn't going to be a star. He is a star. And as for Cheeto Vera, despite having lost twice, he's added five more wins to his record, including huge knockouts over legends of the sport. You know, we talk about people making statements on their way to a title shot. Do you feel that you've earned a shot? Honestly, I don't care. For me, it's all about performance. But even he admits, if it weren't for the history between him and the new champ, this fight at UFC 299 would not be taking place. The only reason this fight happened is because I beat him. That's the only reason the fight's happening, so title fight, and I'm excited to become a world champion soon. It's been clear from the beginning, Cheeto doesn't care what everyone thinks. He plans on taking advantage of the opportunity and setting the record straight when it comes to this rivalry. And O'Malley is all about the biggest and best business, getting paid and settling what he thinks was a fluke in their first fight. How did Cheeto become the guy that was going to get the opportunity? Because you have a whole line. Oh, it's money? One, 100%. Because me versus Cheeto is a bigger fight than me versus Murad, me versus Corey. At this stage of their careers, O'Malley is naturally the favorite. He's riding high on momentum and has surprised us in more than one area of the game. But as always, his standout strength lies in his overwhelming, precise, well-timed striking. And the fact that Cheeto tends to be a slow starter will work in his favor. But you cannot count out Cheeto. Not only has he proved he can beat O'Malley, but his power and overall well-roundedness will always be a huge threat, no matter who stands in front of him. Cheeto Vera can find himself in elite circles with his violence and power and the way that he fights but against a more skilled, quick guy sometimes can have some of these problems. O'Bally's game is what it is, but it's great. Very heavily relying upon his incredible striking and range control and power. Only can you go out there and defeat the one guy who has had your number inside the cage. We don't care what the scorecards say, right? We want to see two dudes come out and actually go after each other. And I think that's what we're going to get in this fight. I know you're watching, Cheeto. You know I'm way too fast for you. You ain't going to do it. He ain't gonna be able to do shit to me, bud. He knows it. I'll be ready, I'll be prepared, and I'm gonna get that belt. I'm gonna go through him, I'm gonna stop him, and I'm gonna be world champion. UFC 299 is set to be an absolutely amazing event. There's something special here for every fan in this star-studded lineup. And on March 9th, we witness history yet again. Let's go, let's effing go.